for our next lesson in module 13 we're looking at 13.3 which is on the volume of spheres and our goal for this lesson is to demonstrate how to find the volume of a sphere now let's go ahead and start off with a diagram of a sphere so we're going to start with a circle or what is supposed to be a circle inside the circle we're going to do an oval and then a dot in the center of that oval and there we have a rough drawing of a sphere. And our formula for the volume of a sphere is going to be V, volume of the sphere, is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So the radius is going to go from the center of the sphere out to the edge. You can actually draw the radius going from the center to any red line and it looks like it should be the diameter no matter how you draw that radius going to an edge it looks like it is the radius okay so volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed radius goes from the center of the sphere out to the edge of the sphere and then actually brings us to our definition for a sphere which we're going to say is a three-dimensional figure with all points the same distance from the center. And again, that same distance is the radius. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of how we can find the volume when we're given the radius of a sphere. So for our first example, we're told to find the volume of the sphere below. The sphere has a radius of 12 centimeters, and it turns out that a professional lens basketball has a radius of 12 centimeters so we are going to be finding the volume of a professional men's NBA basketball so again we go back to our volume formula V is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed and so we're going to substitute our value for the radius in for r and so we get V is equal to 4 thirds times pi times 12 cubed. Now this is one that we definitely are going to need our calculators for. We're going to go ahead and to get our exact volume we're going to first cube 12. So that means 12 times 12 times 12. So that means 144 times 12 which is 1728. So for our volume it's going to be 4 thirds times pi times 1,728. And to get our exact volume, like we've been doing all module long, our exact volume is going to have pi as part of the answer. So we're going to take 4 thirds, multiply it by 1,728, and our pi is going to come to the end of our answer. So when we take 4 thirds times 1,728, if you're not quite sure how to create fractions in your calculator, you can do 1,728 1, multiplied by 4 divided by 3. All is one line of math, and that will give you your answer of 2,304 pi centimeters cubed. So that is the exact volume of a men's NBA basketball. That's the exact volume. Now for the approximate volume, again we're going to take this number here, multiply it by the pi button on our calculator, which again will give us our approximate volume, which equals 7,238.2 centimeters cubed. So in every inside of every men's NBA basketball there are 7238.2 cubic centimeters of air that are inflating that basketball and that is the approximate volume the exact volume is 2304 pi centimeters cubed okay so just our first example on finding volume of a sphere let's take a look at another one for a second example 
we are told that a baseball has a diameter of 3 inches, and that's actually pretty accurate. It's just under 3 inches for the diameter of a baseball. What is the volume? So, thinking back to what we've talked about so far, diameter goes all the way across. So, 3 inches is not the value that we want to use for the radius. Formula is V is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, if the radius is 3 inches, that means, I'm sorry, if the diameter is 3 inches, that means that the radius is going to be 1.5 inches. So we're going to take this 1.5, substitute it in for r. v is equal to 4 thirds times pi times 1.5 cubed. Use your calculator to take 1.5 times itself three times. And we get v is equal to 4 thirds pi times 3.375. Now with this value you might be tempted to round that to 3.4, but when you're trying to get an exact volume you need to save your rounding until the very end. Okay, so even if you get a very long decimal, save your rounding until the end after we find our exact volume. So, once we have our 3.375, to find our exact, we're going to take this, so don't clear your calculator. Keep, your, keep that number in your calculator. Take this number, multiply it by 4 thirds, or again, multiply by 4, divide by 3. And when we do that, we get an exact volume equal to 4.5. So our exact volume is going to be 4.5 pi inches cubed. All right, that's our exact volume. For our approximate volume, we take that 4.5 and multiply it by pi. So our approximate volume is going to end up being 14.1 inches cubed. All right, approximate volume, 14.1 inches cubed. Exact volume, 4.5 pi inches cubed. And even though it doesn't look like it, as a reminder, these two numbers are nearly equivalent to each other. They don't look it, but they are, their value is very close to being the same. All right, let's take a look at two more examples for our next, next example. Instead of finding volume, when we're given the radius, we're going to find the radius when we're given the volume. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that's going to look like. Third example says to find the radius of a sphere that has an exact volume of 562.5 pi feet cubed. Jumping right back into our volume formula, volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So our goal here is going to be to get this radius cubed by itself and then to cube root both sides to find the actual radius. We're going to take our value for volume and substitute that in for V this time. So we'll have 562.5 pi equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Again, the goal is to get this radius cubed by itself. That means we need to get rid of this 4 thirds pi. So what we can do, we can start off, we're going to have to get rid of both the 4 thirds and the pi. Let's get rid of the pi first. Since we're multiplying everything on the right, dividing by pi will cause the pi's to cancel over here. But if we, if we divide by pi on the right, we have to divide by pi on the left as well. Well, these pi's cancel as well. So we're left with 562.5 is equal to 4 thirds r cubed. Our pi's have canceled on both sides. Now we need to get rid of this 4 thirds. Well, if you remember back to earlier in the year when we were learning how to solve with rational coefficients, when we have a fraction, we want to multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 fourths. 
the fours cancel and the threes cancel, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. If we multiply by three fourths on the right, we have to multiply by three fourths on the left. So when we take three fourths times 562.5, we're going to get the lovely number 421.875 is going to be equal to our radius cubed. Now, doesn't look pretty, don't round it yet, because we're at our last step, and what we want to do now is we need to get rid of this cubed here. And we know that we should know that cube and cube roots are inverse operations of each other. So I'm going to cube root this right side. The cube root and the third power are going to cancel. And so we're left with r is equal to, if we cube root the right side, we also have to cube root the left side. Now there is a button on your calculator that will do this for you. I do not expect you to find the cube root of 421.875 using pencil and paper. So use your calculators. There is oftentimes a button that looks similar to a square root, but instead of having just the square root like that, it might have an X out front with a Y underneath, maybe something along those lines. If you need help finding the cube root button on your calculator, please let me know and I will help you find that button. When we take the cube root of 421.875, it nicely works out that our radius is going to equal 7.5. So the radius of our sphere is going to be 7.5, not inches, 7.5 feet. That is a big sphere. Let's take a look at one last example. So far we've been dealing with spheres for this whole lesson. The last example that I want to focus on is dealing with a hemisphere. So it's literally taking a sphere, chopping it in half. So if the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, for a hemisphere, we're taking half of it, which means that we can literally take our fraction here and multiply it by one half. So all that does changes the numerator to a two. Four thirds times one half equals two thirds. So for the volume of a hemisphere, it's going to be two thirds pi r cubed. And to draw your hemisphere, again, you start off with your oval and then just make a half circle on top of it. Or you can make your oval and make a half circle below it. Either way you end up with a hemisphere. So let's say that this hemisphere has a radius that equals 6 meters. We'll substitute this 6 in for the radius so we have v is equal to 2 thirds pi times 6 cubed. Well, 6 wasn't one of the powers of 3 that I had you memorize earlier in the year, but I'll tell you right now that 6 to the third power is 6 times 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6, I believe, is 216. So our volume is going to be equal to 2 thirds times pi times 216. For exact, we're going to multiply 2 thirds times 16, giving us v is equal to 144 pi meters cubed. All right, that's our exact volume. For our approximate volume, we'll take this 144 pi, enter it into our calculator to get a value of 452.4 cubic meters, or meters cubed. And that's it. Instead of multiplying by 4 thirds for a full sphere, 
it's two-thirds when we're using a hemisphere. And that concludes our lesson. Hopefully at this point you're able to demonstrate how to find the volume of a sphere and a hemisphere, and also being able to find the radius as well. Write down any questions, concerns you might have, so that we can address those in class.